Woo! All right. 11? Nine. Yes, I'm excited. All right, we in order? Is everybody in order? You are? Checked with your neighbor? All right, so everybody's going to sing the 12 Days of Christmas part, okay? The first time we won't act it out, but maybe by the last time around you have to act out your part. So start thinking about it. I should have put you up here. All right, you ready? Everybody sing on the... A partridge in a pear tree. Two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Six geese are laid. Five golden rings. <laughs> Everything you got, man. Everything you got. Five golden rings. <laughs> Four calling birds. Three French hens. Two turtle doves. And a partridge in a pear tree. All right. All right, Eva, let's go. Day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Seven swans a swimmy. Six geese are laid. Five golden rings. Four calling birds. Three French hens. Two turtle doves. And a partridge in a pear tree. Eight maids are milking. Seven swans are swimming. Six geese are laid. Five golden rings. Four calling birds. Three French hens. Two turtle doves. And a partridge in a pear tree. Nine ladies dancing. Eight maids a milking. Seven swans a swimming. Six geese a laying. Five golden rings. Four calling birds. Three French hens. Two turtle doves. And a partridge in a pear tree. Ten lords are leaping. Nine ladies dancing. Eight maids are milking. Seven swans are swimming. Six geese are laying. Five golden rings. Four calling birds. Three French hens. Two turtle doves. And a partridge in a pear tree. Eleven pipers piping. Ten lords a leaping. Nine ladies dancing. Eight maids a milking. Seven swans a swimming. Six geese a laying. Five golden rings. Four calling birds. Three French hens. Two turtle doves. And a partridge in a pear tree. You got to act out your part. Twelve drums, drummers, drummers, drumming. Eleven pipers piping, ten lords a leaping, nine ladies dancing, eight maids a milking. <laughs> Seven swans are swimming. Six geese are laying. Five golden rings. Four calling birds. Three French hens. Two turtle doves. And a partridge in a pear tree. Yeah. Merry Christmas.
Good job, guys. Good job, good job. You can keep it. How many wish that you had joined now? <laughs> Come on. How many of you thank God for Hunter making it all very, very special right in the middle of it? What a blessing. What a blessing. Amen. Is everybody good today? I don't mean you're acting good, but how many of you are doing good? God's blessed you. This has been, as I said before, such an amazing year. My a picture came up today on, on, on Facebook, and it was a picture with me and my father, maybe one of the last ones we took together. His birthday was the 23rd, and I was thinking about what a, what a blessing my dad was to me. And then I started realizing that 57 years ago, I was packing my bags to leave family to start ministry. Packing my, well, it probably wasn't a bag. It probably wasn't very much of a bag, and it probably was a bag. But it's amazing to look back over your past. And so many times as we're singing these old songs that are hard to remember all the words, but you need to go back over your life and remember what God has done. It's easy to think about the junk and the negative and what's bad, but how many know God is good all the time? And so much of what we went through would not have been so bad if we'd have realized the Lord is right there with us. Come on, so if you know that's true, then let's enjoy our future. Come on, stay with me. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my life. Come on, stay with me. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my life. And we're celebrating today. My mother-in-law is 92 years old and nothing hurts. She got to talk to all of her daughters yesterday and celebrate. And isn't it amazing that at 92, she has no pain? Don't you hate her for that? <laughs> Some of the people are saying, well, I got pain everywhere in my body. But how many of you know... She's thankful, and every day she witnesses about the healing and the presence of the Lord. How many of you would like to have 92 years of health? How many would like to just have 92 years of anything, just to live a little bit longer? We're going to make this very brief. We'll probably be out by midnight tonight, but anytime you say short, it doesn't always work. But in Luke, the second chapter, there's many of the families that quote this or read it to their families every year. But today, we're going to take a little bit of a different turn. Do you realize that when the Lord came, he didn't come to have fun? He didn't come in splendor. We have this crude little manger that just wouldn't, wasn't exactly like they had it in the days of the Lord where Mary and Joseph had to find a place. Can you imagine what this day would have been like to her? She's in pain ready now, starting maybe having the contractions and the suffering. And Joseph is realizing it's a crude place to put the the baby, when it does come, how are we going to do this? And all he can find is some straw and some hay, and he puts it in a feeding trough. That's what that represents today, a feeding trough. Can you imagine the smell? Some people can't even go into a barn without having to go and sanitize their hands. Jesus was born there. How many of you understand? Everything is symbolic. He came to a dirty, stinky world. Perfection personified came to a lowly manger. Why did he do that? He came symbolically to let you know. He didn't come for a bunch of righteous folks. He came for those that are sinners. He came for people like me. Someone says, well, you've never killed anybody, but how many know sin is sin? Have you ever hated anybody for a minute? It's the same spirit as, as murder. So don't disqualify yourself from being called you were a sinner. I'm not a sinner now. Somebody say, I'm a sinner saved by grace. No, I'm a child of God now. I may get a little angry once in a moment, but I'm going to come right back and let the forgiveness of the Lord have its right away and its will. The Lord came. I heard a dear uh, minister saying just uh, this week something that blessed me. He said the preacher was dealing with a man that was losing his son in the hospital. The preacher went to pray with him as the child is dying, and the, the man looked at the preacher, and he says, D do you think God understands the pain of my, I'm losing my child? And the pastor said, yes, he, he knows what it feels like to lose your son. He lost his son. And the man said, yeah, but he knew he was going to raise him back up. And the preacher said to the man, yeah, but you know, you're going to have your son raised again for all of eternity. Amen. How many of you know Jesus is the only one that can give you that? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Does he deserve praise? Yeah. If you've ever been forgiven of sin, who did it? Jesus. If you've ever been healed in your emotions... Over a broken marriage, a broken life, a death of a loved one. How many of you know the healer is the one? If the doctor said you can't make it, but you do, how many of you know that when Jesus heals you, he's the only one that can do it? 
The Bible said there, there is no healing remedy that can do what God can do. There's nothing that can do that. But I'm glad I've got a healing Jesus. Amen. I'm glad I've got a forgiving Jesus. I'm glad I've got a merciful for Savior. Can we just imagine for a moment as we look at this little simple little thing and I'm almost afraid to pick it up because it's just simply made. But I want you to stop for just a moment and realize that when they finally took that baby and wrapped him up, cleaned him up, and put him in the manger. In that manger was every forgiveness that was ever needed by every human being on the planet from Adam all the way to the last man that lives. The only cure for sin was laying in that manger. We have people in the Bible like David, that the greatest king of all, and yet the most horrible man for a season of his life. A man that has his dearest friend, of the list of his dearest friends in Scripture, the last one in the line is Uriah the Hittite, which is his dear friend, but because he wanted an affair with his wife, and he did that, and he produced a baby, then he had to cover it up. He had to get his best friend killed. How many know that's not a good thing? David understood the mercy of God. If you read the Psalms, you hear a lot about it, but he also in Psalm 51 said, Lord, I need you to wash me. I need you to re- create within me a clean heart. How many of you realize you can't get a clean heart anywhere else? But the one that was in that manger is the one that say, came to say, I'll give everybody a clean heart. Do you realize that every sin of every man, woman, boy, and girl, every rotten, filthy, evil, lusting, craving, murderous, uh, theft, every rotten thing that's ever been done, how many of you realize in that manger was the only one that could make it all brand new? I don't think we praise him enough. I don't think we thank him enough. I realize I need him every day. Come on, stay with me. I need him every day. And when we realize the vastness of his mercy and the greatness of his grace, I can't even comprehend. I, I don't know why God would say, I'm going to send my own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. How many, he was tempted in every measure like every one of us, but he was not going to bow to sin. He came to destroy sin, and I'm glad that he destroyed mine. Aren't you glad that the forgiver has lived in you and he loves you? God, if we walked out of this place with that full understanding, we could shout the rest of the year and all the rest of our life. I'm glad for my Savior that has come. Everybody say, he is my joy. He is my peace. He is my righteousness. He is my forgiveness. He is my happiness. He is my, come on, you could list this thing all day long, but every bit of those blessings and every one of them came from the one that laid down in a stinky, rotten stall, if you will, so that he could get rid of the stink of life. He can get the stink off of you. He can get rid of the germs of life, which I'm talking about sin, depravity, and all the evil that's ever been done. He came that we could have life, not for him to have life. I was thinking this, this week about how the Lord came. Notice he didn't decide to live three score and ten. He didn't decide to live 70 years, but he decided to abbreviate life about halfway through it to let us understand he knows what happens when life is cut short. Everybody in this room has had a loved one that has gone on. Am I right? How many of you have had to pass by the casket of a child or a young one or one that was not 70, 80, 90 years old? We question that. But how many of you realize this life is only a vapor? Amen? But how many know the next one? You don't even make plans to get out of that one because that one's forever and forever and forever. Anybody want to live forever? Any of you old folks remember that song, anybody want to live forever? Just say, I do. What do you do? I receive him. Yes, I do. I receive the one that forgives me. It's not the formula of the prayer that matters. It's when your heart is saying, I believe you and I want you. Let's read this together if we can. We begin the story, God was sending his son to fulfill every promise and every prophecy. Nobody has ever come close to fulfilling hundreds of prophecies. Everything that was written from the very beginning through all the ages and all the prophetic words about a Messiah, a Savior coming. In that manger was the manifestation. I I, I won't wrap my mind around it, so I'm not going to get away from Christmas for a long time this year. But listen, if we will. The Bible said there was sent out in those days a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Everybody say payday. When you look at the word taxed, it means, and most of you know what that means, it means you lose all the money you've been saving up. (laughs) But it had every year it would happen for us. But in those days, the world, everybody say the world had to be taxed. 
greedy man that taxes the whole world. It's a greedy man that goes beyond the normal amount of money, and he takes as much as he can. But how many of you realize we had a payday coming? And the payday was to get rid of everything we have. We were going to lay down our life at the casket, and we're going to lose everything that we'd ever possessed, every car, every house, all the money you'd saved. How many know there was going to be a payday where you would have to pay with your life for your sin because you didn't accept the gift of freedom? Anybody glad you're saved? How many of you are totally saved? Anybody just 50% or half? How many know God doesn't give out half percent coupons? He saves you to the bone. He saves you completely. Everybody was under the load of the taxation. Symbolically, we were all needing to pay or have someone make a payment. And I love this. I'm going to stop a minute and say something that I think maybe kind of added a little light to this. There was a gentleman that had a friend that was a judge. And he went to his friend that was a judge, good, good friend, and he handed him his, his t- ticket. He got a ticket driving too fast or reckless. And he walked over to his friend, the judge, and he said, will you take care of this for me? And the, the man took it away from him, and he went away. And a few weeks later, he ran back into his friend, the judge, and he said, did you, did, you, did you take care of the ticket? Did you just get it off my record? He said, no. He said, what do you mean you didn't take care of it? He said, yeah, you told me to take care of it. He said, what did you do? He said, I paid it. But in your, your ability, you could have just moved it, you know, act like it wasn't there and just taken it. So I don't has to pay. He said, well, were you guilty? He said, yes, I was guilty. He said, then you had to pay it. And if you didn't pay it, somebody had to pay it for you. That's the law. And he said, if I'm going to be a righteous judge, I can't be crooked. So I paid it for you. How many of you glad that we owed a debt we could not pay? He paid a debt he didn't know. And all that he's done for me, I never can stop praising him. Amen. How many know God knows what you do in secret in the dark in the basement at midnight? And he doesn't know about it just to beat you over the head. He knows about it to let you know I'm willing to forgive even that. Amen. How many have ever sinned in private thought nobody knew? Not one hand went up. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. Altar will be open in a minute. Everybody say we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. This taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor in Syria. All went to be taxed, everyone to his own city. Now, Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Everybody say, the house of bread. This is the house because that's where David was from, and he was of the lineage of David. He went to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Wow. So it was that while they were there in the process of taxing, The days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Everybody say delivered. You know, Mary had, the song goes out a lot right now. It says Mary was the first one to carry the gospel. Kind of poetic, but it is true. But did you realize that once he came forth from her, he's not in her now. And she's going to need a savior. She's going to need a deliverer. She's going to need a healer. How many know somebody said, well, we'll deify Mary and make her equal? No. How many know when Mary came to Jesus' meetings and stood outside the crowd, the disciples said, your mother's here and your brothers are here. He said, who is my mother? What he's saying is she got me into the world. Now anybody that mothers or births the spirit of Christ is my disciple. How many of you have ever given salvation to anybody by a testimony or a word or a scripture or a tract? In other words, we're the ones now that carry the gospel. We're the ones now that have the opportunity. And the greatest gift you'll ever have in this life is not something new for Christmas under the tree. The greatest gift you'll ever have is the ability and the power to give away the gift of eternal life to your family, your friends, and even your enemy. How many know we are rich and we have the gift to give? Mary carried it for nine months and she delivered it so all of us could benefit. But how many of you realize now it's up to us to let the one that lives inside of us, not a baby in us, but a full grown savior healer deliver work his work in and through our life how many of you glad christ is in you and that's the hope of glory and the bible said they laid him in a manger after they had wrapped him in the swaddling clothes her firstborn son how many mary had other children but those children were not deity (laughs) amen say they were not deity why because god was not their father yet joseph was daddy how many know there is a difference Somebody said last year, it doesn't matter if she was a a virgin or not. Yes, it does. The difference is salvation or no help. 
How many glad that she was pure? So the Bible says she brought forth the firstborn, wrapped him in swaddling clothes. We dealt with that earlier, how these strips of cloth were wrapped around every lamb by the rabbinical shepherds that would take care of lambs and make sure they had no spot or blemish or imperfection because once that lamb was now of age and at a time and a family needed a forgiveness of sin, they would bring that lamb for sin and for a sacrifice. How many know if it had a spot or a blemish? It was not accepted by God. The only one that can save you is Jesus, the only lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world is not someone out here in the field somewhere eating grass. The only real Lamb of God is Jesus Christ, the one that came to die. He came to suffer. He came knowing he was going to have to suffer. That's why in the garden he prayed, Father, if there's any other way, let this cup pass for me. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. I came to do this, and I'm going to do it. And I think he prayed that for our benefit because we all act like that sometimes, and he needed to show us an example. The Bible said she wrapped him up delicately as a lamb of God in swaddling cloth and she laid him in a manger because there's no room for them in the inn always bothers us thinking well the hotels are all full there's people right here in this city that don't have any room for Jesus I don't have time for Jesus what do you have time to do oh I don't watch video games well that's more important than heaven I get that I like to take drives around the block in my new car. Um, that's better than heaven. I understand that. I like to fix good meals and eat a lot. That's better than heaven. You don't want room in your life for Jesus? I can understand if you don't like me. I'm weird. Sometimes I wear weird, wild stuff. Somebody was thinking it, so I just said it for you. But I'm smart enough to know that one day I needed a Savior didn't take me a long time when my daddy said you can have eternal life I thought why not Jesus paid for it how many know there's still the Lord's spirit the Holy Spirit is still knocking on the door of a lot of people's hearts you're a motel today accept it do you have room for Jesus amen well my family's here they got all the beds full tell them to go next door rather than tell Jesus you don't have room I know some people put family before Jesus. The Bible said, he that doesn't forsake mother or father, brother or sister, houses and lands is not worthy. He's not saying get rid of your family. He's saying, is he more important than anybody? My wife and I have been married 51 years, but Jesus is more important. That's not a put down for me or for her. It's true. How many realize I can't save her? I can't fix her. I can't answer, but God can. Everybody say, I let him in my house. And some of us need to put him in our bed, and some of us need to just carry him around the rest of our life. How many got a place for the Lord to sleep at your house? Listen to this very closely. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. We've discussed these are the shepherds basically in that region that were set apart for preparing lambs for sacrifices. Everybody say, but it was dark. <laughs> Isn't it amazing that they were watching and waiting for the Messiah, not knowing when he was going to come, but in the dark. Aren't you glad the Lord came to a dark world? Aren't you glad he came to you while you're in your biggest mess? I'm not trying to be ugly today, but how many of most of us got saved when we needed a miracle of salvation? Most of us want a healing when we're about to die. Most of us approach the Lord when we have to. I don't want to come to him because I'm sick and dying and desperate. I want to come when everything is all right and just let him know I want to love on you and let you love on me. I want you to be my everything and my all in all. Everybody say, in the dark he came. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid. Can you imagine a totally dark night all alone with a sheep? All of a sudden, a big light comes on. <laughs> wow. I mean, no, that'll scare anybody. I don't care how holy you are. That'll scare you. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. How many know this gospel is for everyone? Amen. There's a war going on right now in Gaza. It's a war between the Muslim empire, the Hamas people, and the Jewish people. There's a war going on. And what's really amazing to me, and it hit me real hard during this war, that God is so patient and loving. Amen? Don't you remember those people? They blew up all those kids and cut up those babies and set them on fire. God doesn't stop reaching out to you. 
How many of you kind of give up on loving those kind of people for a minute? They're still potentially God's kids if they'll just accept Jesus. Amen. Yeah, they did a series on the life of the Lord here at Bodybuilding. We found out from the time he was born, the chief priests were involved in hating him. Falling around trying to throw him off the cliff, find a way to kill him for 30, after 30 years old, for three and a half years. We need to pray for those people. Am I right? One of our ministers went to Israel a couple years ago, and they wore a Jesus T-shirt, and the rabbis came and said, take that off or leave or we'll put you in jail. He said, it's about Jesus. They said, it defends us, leave. He was shocked. How many realize they don't accept that he's Messiah? I don't know about you, but I'm praying for him. I'm praying for their safety from the bombs that are coming by the hundreds every month. But how many know that more than that iron dome, that military clad, how many know the hand of God is upon them because God still loves them and wants them to be his children and will. He'll continue to reach out. How many know God also loves Hamas? Wrap your brain around. How can God love murderous people? How could he love me? Don't throw the clay away. Don't stop loving people just because they did you wrong. When did Jesus forgive the people nailing him to the cross? After he rose from the grave? While they're driving the nails. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. You know what he's saying? If I can do that, can't you forgive your enemy? Remember the declaration, we don't ever want to preach that because people get mad and leave church. Love your enemies. Do good to those that despitefully use you. Do good, do good to them. We're not there, are we? I wonder why we're not getting a mighty revival. We're going to get one, but not acting like that. This year, I believe the greatest revival the world has ever seen is going to be spawned during the year coming. Because we're not just going to talk scripture and then avoid the stuff we don't like. We're going to do it. Amen. Everybody say, he came to love the ones that hated him. And then he told us, you carry on that mission and that message. How many would like to be able to love everybody? How many not quite there yet? Makes me love everybody. Almost everybody. Not hardly anybody. I'm getting down to where we live, right? But Jesus came to die for the sinners. Not only that, the ones that hated him. The Bible said the light was shining down, and I love this so much. He said, you don't have to be afraid. I'm going to bring good news and great joy. It's going to be for everybody. Would everybody say everybody? All people. I love this, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The prophet said it would be in Bethlehem. That's why Joseph had to get taxed so he could make that journey, what, 90-mile journey, all the way from Nazareth, all the way to Bethlehem, and he was there right on time because the baby couldn't be born in Nazareth. The baby had to be born in Bethlehem because God just said it. The prophet shot off his mouth, and so they've got to be taxed. And they got to take that 90, I think actually 97 mile journey and bring that pregnant woman all the way on that painful excursion, if you will. Why? Because prophecy is always going to come just like God said. And everything that God said he was going to do, he's going to do it. And here's the key. I'm going to ask you a dozen times today. Do you believe that he came? And if you believe he came, do you believe he's going to come for you in your circumstance right now? Otherwise, why did he come? He didn't just come to hang out. He didn't come just to go through formula. He came to fix what's wrong in your life. He, if he'll save you when you ask him and heal you when you need it, how many he'll also be there to work out the details of life? Everybody say, I believe he's going to show up. Can you imagine the shepherds are wondering, I know the Messiah is coming, but I don't know if it'll be in my lifetime. And all of a sudden the angel said, yeah, it's happened today. Everybody say, this is the day the Lord has made. Wow. For unto you is born this day in the city of David. Y'all know where that is. Shepherds, Bethlehem is right there. And he's Christ. He's the Savior. He's Messiah. He's Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. God always is extra faithful to give us examples. I don't know how many more examples he's going to have to give us. 
All the old covenant is full with examples and theories and ideas of how it's going to work. But I just got to tell you something. I am so thrilled that every once in a while when I forget, the Lord will remind me of another scripture. Give me another verse. Give me another understanding. And it all works for my enlightenment. As long as I'm willing to receive it, he said, you shepherds that know how to wrap your lambs in swaddling cloth, you're never going to see another baby, maybe in your whole life, that is wrapped up like this baby. But when you see that baby, you'll know it's the one. I don't think it was because Jesus had brown hair or he had a tan come on how many realize it wasn't the facial expression we don't know what he looked like artists have given us ideas the movie about jesus everybody thinks that looked like jesus why because all the pictures look like that how many realize you don't know what he looked like actually if you want to know what he looks like he's in me okay i didn't say looks like me but he's in me the only part of me that reflects him is my smile and my praise and my worship You don't know what he looks like either. Am I right? Wow. But this is the sign. You'll find the baby wrapped as a sacrificed lamb, laying in a manger stall. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God. Wow. Can I stop there a minute and say this? It doesn't say they were singing. We always say they were singing. It doesn't say they were singing. It said they were saying. I know some people can't sing good, so they say. Say stuff. Just helping you. Listen closely. This multitude of this heavenly host, the Bible said they were saying praises, giving praises to God. Wonder why they praised God. Because they had just delivered the message that the Savior is born. Where does God live? In the praises. Anybody want God at your house all year? Anybody to work in your body, in your mind, your, all year long? Well, you know what to do. Praise Him. Well, yeah, I'm just going to say, praise your Lord. No, you got to be thankful. That's what produces praise. Because if you're not thankful, you can't praise. If you don't believe it and you don't believe Him, how are you going to praise Him? Have you ever felt God's presence just show up? Anybody ever feel like you're crazy a little bit for a minute all by yourself? You don't have to do that, but there's something about the presence of the Lord. I found out it's caused people in this ministry to get back up that were dead. Anybody ever seen anybody raised from the dead? Amen. Have you ever seen somebody with white eyes, blind all their life, 82 years old, that mess just runs out of their eyes and they're able to see 2020? How many know God can do everything? Look at me. I've, I've been around too much too long not to believe in God. Amen. How many know God can do everything? I watched about a four-pound growth tumor coming out of the chest of a lady in Haiti, afraid that she's giving her baby cancerous milk, and she came up for prayer, and while we're praying, that thing totally dissolved and went away. You can't tell me God can't do it. You can't tell me that the healer's not still here. Well, the day of healing is over. Then why do you pray? There's churches that say, we don't believe in the day of miracles, but if somebody gets sick, they're going to be praying. And then they quit again because they don't want to preach it. I'm just trying to help you right now. Everybody say, the healer is in the house. The Bible said that the multitude of heavenly hosts were praising God. Why? Because that's what God lives in their praise in the heavenly and now in the earth. Saying this, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward all men. I don't know about you, but I need peace right now and I need goodwill. I need to be one that gives goodwill. I need to receive goodwill and I need peace. Anybody glad that he gives you peace in the midst of the storm? Came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to the other, Let us now go even to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass. Everybody say, it happened. It came to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. They came with a haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Everybody say, the same day. This day. They got there as quickly as they could, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby. When they had seen it. They made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all those that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherd. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. We don't know how much time there was between the Lord as a baby hearing the sounds of the worship of the shepherds. We don't know how much longer it was until the wise men came. I said, how many wise men? I don't know. Some say three because they brought three gifts. 
I found out in most rooms there's not really more than three wise men at a time, but that's just all the women are saying, amen. But they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold is a symbol of a king's reward. Frankincense is a symbol of the, the, the aroma of the presence, the power, and the authority. And myrrh is a symbol of suffering and death. They gave gifts reflecting what his life would mean. And they came 400 miles. Kathy's been to Israel in the same journey on a different way, probably in a bus rather than on the back of a mule or a camel. How many of you would follow a star for 400 miles just to see if Jesus really is coming because that star said so? These astrologers, astronomers are students of the word of God, and they knew that when that light comes, it's going to go toward the Messiah. Is it? All the way from the east, we don't know where that is, maybe over upper Africa, we don't know exactly where they came from, but we do know the distance is 400 miles, which is like going to the edge of Canada or Detroit and coming back and then going again and coming back. That's how far they went just to see the baby. Makes me wonder why sometimes we can't come 40 miles to church. Just, just a thought. How many know he's number one? And the Bible said when they checked out with the Herod to find out the leader of the country, where is this, this Messiah, the man that's born king, the baby born king? He's not going to be king, he's born king. Herod thought, oh, no, somebody's going to take my throne. And so he said, when you find the baby, tell me. Come back, tell me. I want to worship. The Bible said when they got to the house, they gave the gifts and warned of God in a dream not to go back and tell Herod because he's a murderous man. When Herod had found out that he was mocked and betrayed by the wise men, sent out a decree throughout all the region to kill all the babies two years old and under. That means that the baby wasn't a week old now. He's not a few days old. Now it's been time. So he made sure he got the right one by getting from two-year-old all the boys down. Can you imagine the sound of the death and the crying and the weeping in the country? We don't know how many thousands there were. Some people literally believe there's 12,000 from every region of the tribes, maybe up to 144,000. We don't know. You can speculate a lot of things and not have Scripture to add to it, but I want you to listen to this. The Bible said they went away the other way because they were there to worship the Lord and they wanted to protect his life. The question is, well, why did they go to the, the man who would hate him and try to kill all the babies? Look at me. Even God knows the negative things. God knew that he was going to kill the baby and Rachel was going to be weeping over her children. Rachel, symbolically the mother of all those ancestor children. God knew it, and God knew the timing and how much hate comes trying to stop Jesus. The thing that stops sinners from accepting the Lord is the devil's plan to make us not want him. Not always hate him, but just don't want him. How the devil's number one job is to stop you from coming to Jesus. Amen? He'll try offense. He'll try anger. He'll try religious mess. There's no reason. Jesus has done you nothing but good. As a matter of fact, if you're breathing, he gave you that. If the blood is flowing through your veins, he gave you that. If you're alive and are born, he gave you that. How many understand every good and perfect gift? But we don't want to let him be in charge of our life. We want to be in control. But here this morning, as we close, I want you to listen to what this this entire story is all about. As these wise men came, they came to give symbolically everything they could because they recognized the Messiah has come. When the star led them all the way on that 400 mile or whatever it is journey, a long time, they were on their way knowing that that star is going to lead us. There's not a star in this room today, but 2,000 years ago, there was a bright light shining down. Amen. What did it look like? I don't know, but it had a tail as big as a kite. Okay, you heard the song. And the Bible said when it came over the place where Jesus lay, they said, here it is. Look up at me a minute. How many glad Jesus is not still right there? How many glad he did come? How many glad he did grow up? How many glad he laid down his life? Otherwise, we have no reason to be in this room. We don't come together just because we all like each other. Amen? We come together because he died for us. And my job is to instruct you to make it as simple and as easy as you can to tell everybody that you can. Come and live forever with me. How many know that we can spend thousands of dollars educating or helping pay our kids 
college off so they have a better future. We can spend thousands of dollars getting them a surgery so they live longer. But we don't bother sometimes in getting them to church so they can live forever. Just stop and think about it. The enemy tries to bring a realm of confusion. But in this day today, I'm going to ask that everyone will do this. Stand to your feet, if you will. I'm going to ask you to determine again to let him go home with you. Well, brother, I've been in church all my life. I'm saved. I said, Jesus, I love you years and years ago. Is he Lord of your life? Is he the one in control of your life? I don't have to question if he loves you. You don't have to question whether or not I love him. That's not our jobs. But I want you to ask yourself, do I love him more than anything in this life? Is he more important than my gratifying my flesh, my cravings, my sin? Let's bow our heads together for a minute. Lord, Isaiah said, unto us is born a child. Unto us a son. The child is the son of God. The government will be upon his shoulders. All the ruling and reigning and the power, eternal and present, will be upon him. And some will recognize and he'll be called wonderful. Oh God, let me say that to you through Jesus more often. Counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, coming as the Prince of Peace. When I was praying this week about this service, the Lord put it in my heart to remind us that He's the one that forgives all of our iniquities and He heals all of our diseases. For just a moment, if you will, I'm going to ask everyone in this room to just consider your life. Are you in obedience right now? Are there any besetting sins or hidden sins? Secret imaginations and theories. Are you an example if the world found out what all is going on in your mind, in your body, in your house, your circumstance? Would you be a discredit to the kingdom? David was publicly shamed for his private indiscretions. We've all sinned. That's not the issue. David fell on his face and repented and stopped it. But I'm going to ask everyone in this room to look in your heart and ask yourself, am I ready to take the Lord home with me, not as a little babe in a manger, but am I ready to let him be my Lord? Lord, I weep many times because I realize there's those that you love so much and they don't love you back. I've seen a father that didn't love his child. I've seen a mother that didn't love her daughter. I've seen daughters and sons that didn't love their mom and daddy or their siblings. I've seen all that. It breaks my heart. But it pales in comparison to the fact that we can dish you, reject you that has done nothing but love us after you gave us life. Now you want to forgive us from all of our sins so we can be with you forever and forever. I thank you, Lord, for forgiveness today. The path that I walk will affect my children. The path that you walk, mom and daddy, will affect your children and your grandchildren. I say, well, they'll never find out my sin. In time, the Bible said everything that's hidden will be revealed. I want everyone in this room today, please, consider this. Don't let this be just another Christmas Eve where we enjoy colored lights and a beautiful tree. And Today, God, I make a fresh dedication to you that more and more I'll be more silent in criticism, judgmentalism, arrogance. I ask you, Father, to help us today to be real with ourselves because you already know every detail. You know us really. If you haven't made him Lord of your life or you've been to the formula but you just kept falling down, please get up. He's not out to humiliate you. He's out to make it new. Can you imagine him looking off the cross forgiving the killers? That's how much he loves me. That's how much he loves you. One of the thieves, the malefactors, maybe a murderer, said, if you're really this son of God thing that you act like you are, why don't you get us off this cross? And the man across at the other, on the other cross beside the Lord said, man, don't you realize we deserve what we're getting? He's never done anything wrong. 
He's here to forgive us. Paraphrasing. And the thief said to the Lord, you remember me when you come in your kingdom. Somehow he knew that his kingdom was not of this world. It's greater. He's about to die and he's going to go there soon. And the Lord said, today you'll be with me in paradise. I want anybody in this room that hasn't made a total commitment to the Lord to lift up your hand and say, Lord, strengthen me to lead my family. I've had God deal with me harshly and say, if you really love your children, you'll help them find eternal life. Well, I don't know that Jesus thing. I'm not going to do it. I'm embarrassed about Jesus. You can be embarrassed about anything. You don't have a right to be embarrassed about it. They need you. Parents, grandparents, your babies need you. They need you. Is there anyone today that would like to make a brand new start? Just lift up your hand and say, I'm not ashamed to say I need a brand new start. Yeah, but I got a whole lot more sin than I want to do. Isn't it about time to give it up? It'll kill you, steal, destroy. God bless you. Anyone else today say, Lord, I just want to, I want to be sure that it's well with my soul. You came to do all the suffering for me. Don't let me reject you now. Anyone else today just need that? Just lift your hand. It's very simple. We're not saved because we lift our hand or pray a little a few words of a prayer. We're saved because we accept him as our Lord. Accept the forgiveness. Let's pray with those with their hands. Lord Jesus, I didn't realize until this season how much you suffered. A lifetime of rejection. More than just the nails. More than just the cross. More than just the whipping post. You looked into the eyes of those you were going to die for. And even your own people said, let his blood be upon us and our children kill him. You suffered so much. God, I don't want there to be any suffering in the heavenly realm because I'm a rejecter. But I want to be a believer. I receive you now as the Lord of my life. You said you'd forgive me of all of my sins, so I know I am washed right now in the blood, the precious blood of Jesus. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Perfect me. And I believe that you just heard my cry. Let's all say it together so we can hear ourselves say it. I am a child of God. I am forgiven. I belong to the Father. God is my Father. Jesus is my elder brother. The Holy Ghost is my comforter. And I'll never be alone. Ever again. Just for a moment, somebody today, you're struggling because you don't know what you'll do when you go back home. Do you really love those you're going back to enough to give them life? Don't be ashamed of Jesus. Don't be ashamed. You don't have to make your dedication decision here in the front of the building. You don't have to make it any special place. Maybe driving home, you'll reconsider your life. Life passes so quickly. Don't blow the next half, the next portion. Make sure you connect with God in eternity. In Jesus' name. I feel like saying something today while our heads are bowed. This is very important, very serious. There's times in life that your strongest weakness will try to destroy you. Don't have to answer out loud if you don't want to, but this week has been heavy in my heart. When the Lord asked me the question, and I'm going to ask you, all the prophets had prophesied He's coming, and He did. Everything that was prophesied about His life, He fulfilled it, all of it. With no one looking around, how many of you are willing to say, I believe God is going to do for me what he promised? Is he bigger than family salvation? Is he bigger than addiction or bondage or some mess in our life? Is he bigger? Can he deliver your loved ones? Do you believe he's going to come? Do you believe he did come? Do you believe he came just to hang out and leave and leave you abandoned? No, he came that we might have life and life more abundantly. I want everyone to lift your hand and say, Lord, I claim salvation for my whole house. I claim deliverance from the sin that so easily besets them. Not just a habit, but flesh ruling. Father, I want us to live so righteously in your presence that we'll never give the sinners an occasion to blaspheme. 
You said for us never to let our good be evil spoken of. I ask you, Father, to let every one of us in this house consider where we are right now. Not where we were, but where we are right now. Let us claim the blood of Jesus Christ as the mercy and the grace and the forgiveness of our sins. Can everybody in agreement say, I need the Lord. I receive him in the fullness of his power. I accept all that he's got for me. And I claim victory in Jesus' name. Andy, would you come up just a minute? I want to I want to touch you. Can I, again? Can I pray with you? Just let the Lord touch your life. Danielle, would you stand with me for a moment? I love your outfit. You're in a transition period. I want to repeat what God is saying to you. The Lord spoke to my heart to speak this, and I want you to get it. He wants you to fully believe that he is going to come and do what he's promised he's going to do for you. It's been delayed and tarried and hindered, but it's going to come in his perfect time. We're new friends, but we're going to be friends for eternity. And right now, the Lord is saying to tell you, you can trust me to come right on time. Nobody in the old covenant knew exactly the day or the hour. They saw the signs of the star. They saw the signs that were coming when Mary got to Bethlehem expecting. But Father, today I want you to give her a reinforcement in her faith that you're going to fix and finish what she had to leave home. I want you to make a way where there seems to be no way, and I'm asking you, God, to let this be the most awesome celebration season of her life. There's many times in our life that there's losses and there's deaths and there's pain that we can't explain. But your future is going to be filled with more joy than the past. God said it's foolish to say the past is better than the future because the future is always available for better blessings. God is saying sometimes it's different places, different faces that this takes place. Different people, different scenarios. But God is not going to leave you comfortless. He's going to hold you real tight, especially today and tomorrow. As a time of remembering that he came, he came for you. He came to do what you're crying out for him to do. And if he came all the way from glory, if he came that far to, to show up, he's not going to say, no, I can't do that. He's coming to show off. He's coming to manifest his presence and his power. And the Lord is just asking for you to be thankful and to live in praise and thanksgiving. And you'll find that God is going to show up in and around your life and your house and your body. And he's going to make a way where there seems to be no way. I release you from the treachery of what might be. And I release you from the future that you've imagined in your life. I release you from all the questions of the past and I release you to the joy that is unspeakable and full of glory because he is the God that healeth thee. He is the God that brings life. He is the God that changes everything that we present to him. So the battle is no longer yours. The battle is the Lord's. And you're going to give him praise because while you're praising him, he's going to fight for you. He lives in your praise. He abides in your praise. He's right there while you're praising, doing for you what you can't do for yourself. I speak to the physical body. I saw light beginning to move through all the organs and the blood and the bones. I saw the strength of the Lord beginning to repair and renew. God said, I'm going to also cause your faith that theme sometimes seems so feeble and small to bring down the mountain that's before you. The valley shall be filled with a mountain that's inverted into the valley and your path is going to be straight. The climbing, the stress is over. The victory is just ahead. And I speak life to you in peace. In Jesus' name. Can everybody say we agree for the promise of the Father? Let's clap. I feel that right now. Let's give God some praise and some glory and some honor. You may be seated a moment if you will. How many of you feel like you're a blessing? Anybody feel like you're a blessing? Amen. I got to admit to Kathy, I ate almost all of your, all of your bread. And I'm just sorry. It's just, I don't, we're coming to your house for more. <laughs> How many of you are a blessing? The hands of the Lord has brought you to where you are right now. And God's kept you. I mean, danger has been right around you. Even when you didn't know. Because the devil don't like you. And he'd like to cut you off. But I'm going to tell you something. You're going to be a better blessing than you've ever imagined. God's fixing some stuff that you can't. He's going to make opportunities available so you don't have to do this by yourself. You're a blessing and you want to be a bigger blessing. 
And you're going to be a bigger blessing. And you're going to whip Aiden a whole lot more than you ever have. Straighten him out or I will. Just trying to help you. How many believe that God loves us with a perfect love? Do you believe this whole journey has been in vain? Do you believe he came just to show up and say, that's all I'm going to do? Do you believe he's going to finish what he promised? Think about it. What does that mean? He's going to finish what he promised. It's not happen chance. And God didn't just bring this little brat in your life without a purpose. I'm saying that because I love her. But just watch for the changes and God will open up new doors. He's going to do it. Linda, some blessings are going home with you today. And have to work and just let him, let him. We've been in this place over three decades. Some of my new family is kids. And I'm not giving up. We didn't come all this way and for everybody just to die without their answers. How I many know it's time for the victories? Expect this year to be the most shouting time ever. You're going to see people that are quiet. Praise. Why? Because they can't stand still. God's faithful. Just watch God work and let Him. Just be obedient to it. It's all we can do is obedience. And it's going to come forth as power and authority. Do you believe what I'm saying is true today? Amen. The battle is not yours. You can't do this by yourself. You don't have to. Amen. I am going to take home. Is it Matthew? I'm taking the baby and stealing it. I'm just, some days you wouldn't mind. But I'm praying for you a lot because the Lord said he's got a plan. He's not finished. He's still working. He that has begun the work will perform it. With all the prayers that have been prayed that have kept you, God's going to continue till he's finished working his beautiful work in your life. Make up for the pain. Make up for the past. The promise of the yes and the amen. Everybody say, we do believe. We give God glory. Come on, say it out loud. We give God glory. I love you, guy. Did you know that? Sorry if a grown old man says that. Your life has not been, you know, just like everybody else. But there's a purpose for that. Just let God guide. Let him strengthen you. Let him encourage you. Every time you look at that manger, realize it's empty because you don't live there. You know where he lives. And if he lives on the inside, he's going to fix what's broken what's been abused, what's been hurt. Everybody say, He makes a way where there seems to be no way. And He's called you to be a blessing and encouragement. And you are. You encourage me by just being here. Glad you're with us. Everybody say, we're blessed. Anybody believe that this can be the most exciting year of your life? Anybody really believe it's going to be? It's already started. Amen. Amen. I'm very, very honored that you're with us today. You've been through some stuff. But God is doing some very precious things for your house. And it won't be a struggle. Just, it's like a gift. Just take it. Just receive it. Amen. Somebody just told him he won a million dollars and he's going to go pick it up. Lift up your hands. Say, Lord, I'm not going to miss. Ava, after all these years, you're not going to miss what God's told you. He didn't just show up to hang out. He's going to finish what you've been praying for such a long time. And some of the prayers you pray, you can't pray them out loud because you can't. But he knows. He hears the whisper. And he's working it for his glory. Would everybody say, Father, stop every hindrance that is coming against my life. Stop every warfare tool that's come against Spirit of Truth. Reveal and forgive privately and personally. And let us be a blessing. Beginning today, turn all things around for your glory. Everybody in agreement, say in Jesus. Okay, look at me. We'll close. Would you send your baby, if you are God, to a world that hates Matthew, would you send this baby to have him slaughtered halfway through life for people mostly that reject him? Look at me. That's the love of God. While we were yet sinners, he made the plan. Amen. Nobody loves you like God. And Jesus is willing to come and say, yeah, Daddy, Father, 
I'll die for them because I want them for eternity. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. That's what it really, you want to preach a little bit? Oh, you thought I was taking you home? <laughs> I think I lied about that, Grandma. Okay. So much. Everybody say, we're blessed. Come on, stay with me. I claim this, this season to witness to somebody in my family, my neighborhood that needs the Lord. Can I just ask you, my neighbor on the right side lost his wife and mother during COVID in a month. His sister lives about four houses down. I stopped, saw him outside, and I said, just want to let you know I'm praying for you. I know you lost your mother and your sister-in-law. Christmas has got to be a hard season. How many of you know somebody that might need a little word of encouragement? Look at me. Go by. Send a card. Pick up the phone. Give them an email. How many know sometimes people just need to know they're loved? Come on, somebody say with me, I have that power, and I'm going to hold on to it. Aaron, it ain't over. Don't look at it like that. Look at it into the future. Years ago, they said, I see you in the future, and you look a lot better than you look right now. How many of you believe that? I see you with a bigger smile, and I see it as a constant smile, Aaron, and I believe that God's going to do that. We don't stop praying. We don't stop believing just because we see temporary things. Everybody say, every problem is temporary. Victory is eternal. Say it. Problems are temporary. Victory is eternal. Anybody glad you came today? Did anybody get some new information or instruction today? We love you so very much. I'm going to ask if you will.